Good evening, Arbitrary. This is Eli Lacobius Leslie. I'm injured. I'm hurt. I'm hospitalized after my unfortunate encounter with a storm of evil. Why then am I still broadcasting to you? Why am I able? How? It is a requirement of the council. They... <clears throat> they won't let me take a break. So they brought my equipment to me. <clears throat> or rather their homunculi of flesh and eyes hobbled over to me and delivered what I needed to speak and broadcast. So I am speaking and broadcasting. I have been instructed to tell you the truth. There is only one truth. Everything is fine. Please take your medications. They will help wash away those bad memories. My left side was lacerated. Crimson smiled when the blood flew from my skin. When before there existed not a single expressive color on my body, suddenly red was bursting from my veins. The river flowed and mixed in with the black ground. I was running empty. My pure white eyes were losing their light. Thankfully, I've been stitched shut again by the nurse homunculi. I am in what remains of the hospital after it was, for the most part, wiped out by the storm. My metaphorical stuffing is keeping me in one piece. Now I am smiling back the memory of Crimson to tell him that <clears throat> I live. I speak now to tell him and so many others that I live. I live. We are fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Listen to the remnants of the hospital at work. Listen to the machines that pump air into my lungs. Listen to the drone. Listen to my heartbeat making its mark on the machine and cries out in defiance against death. This is all evidence of my well-being. This is all evidence that I cannot die. And now for the local news, the only news that matters. An old species wishes to remind us of its existence. This is a species which perhaps should have been abandoned in the many frivolous projects of Mother Nature. But she is a very busy woman, and she is proud of her work. The Hierophant of old, indeed, is still amongst us. For those who don't remember assuming you've done yourself well in taking your medications, these creatures were once predictors before they were even themselves. They stand tall on two hoof legs. Their lanky body looms over their young, helpless sacrifice, which Council's homunculi brought for their bounty. It would headbutt the victim first with its antlers to disable it. It would stare into the victim's soul with its white, empty eyes filled with curiosity and neediness for the unknown. The Hierophant would pierce his victim's throat with his beak for a quick kill, and then jam their claws into the sacrifice's guts. He would tear out the organs and sprawl them down on the floor. It's then that the entrails are organized properly and with great caution. Although the death may have been violent, it wasn't a violent act to the Hierophant. No, this was insightful. The arrangement of the viscera used to be what determined the future. By reading the patterns his bloody, squishy insides made after they were thrown on the ground, the Hierophant was able to decipher nigh-infinite knowledge. The shape of the future. 
was the blood of man. This process was far too messy to be kept up for long. The council thrives on the suffering of those who live in the arbitrary. How can those residents continue to suffer if they were dead? They for this reason devised a new and safer means of seeing the future. The predictor. The new predictor, frighteningly enough, has been silent in the public's ear. Their words again are for counsel and counsel only. Typically, they are the ones who decide when it is fit to release this new information. The fact that they are kept silent is disturbing in light of these new events. The Hierophant, although outdated, still thirsts for knowledge. Just because the homunculi have stopped delivering him sacrifices doesn't mean he suddenly has ceased craving for knowledge of the future. Now his tall, lanky, antlered figure peers out for new sacrifices of its own to claim. It is an inherently intellectual creature. It desires not to bask the city in red. It desires not to slay sacrifice after sacrifice. It only craves knowledge. This is how it attains that knowledge. Should he find you in the state of a curious mind, approach him with open and welcome arms. You have been chosen. You should feel honored. We're all so happy for you. Congratulations. Your blood is that which shall tell the future. And now, the weather. Today's forecast is peaceful. So, so peaceful. It bleeds the color gray. It screams with silence. The shrieks of nothing will burst your ears and cause you to crumble to the floor in desperation if you choose to bask in it. Tears will fall down your cheeks as you beg for sound, as you beg for cacophony, as you plead for an end to peace. But peace reigns on. Peace reigns down. Peace touches your face in the form of water droplets and blends in with your own tears. This peace is what will be your undoing. If you desire to save yourself from the silent misery, I recommend first... Oh dear. Can you move? If you weren't able to observe, I'm currently... Can you move? No, I cannot. Damn, it's here. Of course. It's chosen a sacrifice with the fewest amount of watchers observing. It truly is clever. For God's sake, Eli, it chose you. <laughs> well, we'll just have to let the future come, won't we? There has been enough death. Excuse me. There has been enough death. 